with current risk high. Surf heights 8 to 9 feet. Well, hello, YouTube. Welcome to the Wolf Den, where things are happening. Because the weather outside is frightful, but in here it's so delightful. In the Wolf Den. I want to go fishing, because it takes my stress away. I want to go fishing, try and cast my blues away. It is blowing a gale outside and is about 30 degrees in Jacksonville, Florida. So when I say the weather outside is frightful, I ain't kidding. And yesterday, I believe the transmission just shit the bed in my uh, 2008 Dodge Diesel Jetty Wolf truck. So... I'm not going anywhere fast. So I decided to bring out some old and some new because this right here is referred to as the top water and shallow diver fishing lure attache case. And we're going to go over some different ways of looking at lure throwing in Jacksonville, Florida's inshore and coastal waters and we're going to do a little show and tell but i do i'm i'm basing everything a little bit different than the average say kayaker and things like that because my whole motto is go big or just go home well what you can see here is this is actually a waterproof storage box Used to keep my GoPro stuff in here until I fine-tuned that like I did my boat. Made it a little lighter weight, a little easier carrying, a little more utilitarian. So I pressed this box duh, into service. Now my last few videos, I talked about monster top water. I talked about pulling gigantic 13 inch crankbaits this summer. That's not what this is about. This is about old and new acquisitions, how I'm pursuing my own personal R&D. In sure, jacks, kudas, king mackerel, trout of course, and anything else that wants to eat hard plastic. No soft plastic, screw that. I'm into the diver, shallow diver, and or top water only because I don't feel like losing a ton of lures. So this is how the box is arranged in layers with everything pinned on foam. This is all foam from left to right. I already did and I will put it in the video description below. I already showed this one right here the usuri noise and it's a wake bait that is going to be an absolute killer i believe little prop little waggity tail little straight down bill look at all the flash that i believe will be a total killer then this is an evergreen this is a really Got this thing dirt, dirt cheap on eBay. And I'm trying to use the old rubber band system here of keeping all these hooks sort of secure. These little trebles are so sharp. This reminds me of a lure that I've thrown a lot, which is the 
Egret Kick A Mullet. This is a swim bait. Look it, it's almost see through. This is an evergreen, that's what they call this, an ever, evergreen from Japan, C Drive. Lipless joint bait, all in Japanese. No rattle. That's what I wanted. Silent and stealthy. But here's something that's very unique. Look at this. It's a straight little bill on it that points down. And I believe that's going to help it really glide. It's got one ball right there, as you can see. And it's got a soft plastic tail. I'm sure a ladyfish would just love to rip that up. Wicked sharp hooks. So this is a uh, get it for a song. This is one of these like Japanese $35 lures, believe it or not. Prob I mean, in that kind of category. This one was in a completely crushed box. So this will be a trout killer. And then you've got your standard dive baits. Duo designed ultimate organization. You got these small four and a half inch duo diving plugs. The one thing about the duo Realis or whatever they call themselves, it's another Japanese brand. The fit and finish are impeccable in every way. Here is, if you've ever wanted to know, when you go on eBay and you see a Chinese lure, little diver, rattler, and you go on eBay and you could get a dive, a seven inch. If you ever go on eBay and you look and you say, how the hell do they do that? This plug, which has a really nice swimming action, as good as any of the Duo Realis or any Yozuris or anything, for a dollar twenty free shipping. How do they do it? Well, it's because they make this for four cents over in China. Four cents. So they're making a profit either way. If you ever wondered what one of those looks like. Here is something very unique. Savage Gear Savage Salt Sand Eel Dot Short Diver. Nothing super special. Oh, it's got a little tiny rattling right back here. Right there. It's very hard to see. There's a couple BBs. So that's a Savage Gear Savage Salt. And then, of course, over here, the the very good, as you can see, this one's good and beat up because I throw it all the time. Daiwa Salt Pro Minnow. Casts like an absolute missile. So that this is my shallow divers, I guess you could call it. So then what we do is we pick this up. I designed this box myself. And we go to layer number two. We have the the newest Yozuri six inch mag darters, bone, bunker, and sardine. This is a knockoff from China of the same thing as this Savage Salt, Savage Gear. They make a top water without the lip that's very similar to this. It's, well, it's exactly this, except just the head is a little bit changed. And this is a top water walk the dog plug. But instead of paying, say, 12 bucks, you can get this from China, Hunt House. Paint job's just as nice. It's not a super, it doesn't have an interior foil or anything. Comes with super great hooks and a very unique wide walk the dog. Uh, the mag darter here is exactly as it says. These can be swimmed in current. You literally put these in a lot of current and you can see how it's got a scooped face here, but it's got an indentation to shoot water across. Mag Darter 165 Floater. So it floats, it darts down underwater. I haven't even thrown these yet. I'm really just waiting for the big opportunity. Then go big or go home. This is a storm thunder stick with gigantic barbarian trebles from VMC on it. Got the flash. This is a 
sort of a maybe down to eight foot, six foot diver. Just a big minnow. Go big, go home. And the reason I say that is if I'm going through the, the idea here of throwing top waters and shallow divers around structure, I am looking for one thing, and that is enormous speckled sea trout. Redfish, of course, jack revals, of course, ladyfish, of course, but that's what I'm really looking for if I'm up in the river. I'm going to be taking these and throwing all these lures at some of my very well uh, seasoned speckled trout float rig fishing spots. Now this is from um, a viewer. Yes, I actually had a viewer send me some stuff. And it's always the same guy. Orawak, Gary, up in Long Island, New York. This is like a dollar something. Uh, kind of a noisy minnow imitation from China on eBay. Just a good, I'll just use, the, it's kind of like be a good long caster because it's got a lot of ball bearings in there. But um, the eyes kind of give it away. And obviously, look at that little tiny bill. It's not going to go very deep. So that kind of sticks with my plan. All right. So then we go to the next layer. There's more, folks. I lift this out. And it reveals even more. I showed these in a prior video. That is a drifter tackle, I believe. Seven inch walk the dog spook type lure. And this one here is a nine incher. Just knocking action type stuff. This right here, this big nine incher. Yeah, this will be thrown into bait schools. This will be thrown in and around the end of the jetty rocks. Then we go to the big dogs. This is the challenge. The challenge lures. I like a challenge to see what will eat them. That is a giant muskie called a nukin, I believe. I can't remember what's the name of this. I can't remember the name of the company. I got all the boxes here. What was this one called? Oh, yeah. There it is. Tackle Industries. Nukin. Four and three quarter ounces and ten inches long. Not a super diver, but diving, I believe, deep enough. Up to 12 foot trolled and four to six foot casted. So, there you go. Kind of a mullety pattern. I'm interested to see how it works because it's got this stub nose and this flat top head here. And I, of course, changed the hooks out because it came with some kind of crappy bronze hooks. I didn't, I did not put on the toughest hooks in the world because, you know, hey, I just want quick penetration. So this is another one to throw into places where it probably doesn't belong. But I can tell you honestly, maybe this, this is 10 inches. I've thrown seven inch uh, swim baits in the St. John's River before. Over rocky areas, over some grass. And I have had good sized trout, not monster gators, suck up a seven inch swim bait years ago and that's the kind of thing i will be challenging myself with this summer so it does work folks it does work so then we really go into super big dog that right there is a storm giant flat stick it's eight and a half inches long 
and three and five eight ounce. The swimming depth is about a foot and a half to eight feet. And that depends if it's trolled or if it's casting. That's a green, green foily looking one. Change the hooks out on this one too. Here's a black, same thing. These are just kind of really ridiculous. Wow. Like I said, uh, there's trout and they don't care. There's trout out there that don't care because maybe uh, a seven inch swim bait I've had, which would make, these are 10 inches. So a seven inch would be about that big, about that big right there. I have had trout 16 inches, 17, 18 inches slam a seven incher, no problem. I've also caught trout on a float rig that had a 12 inch mullet sticking out of its mouth and it was rotten. I might be able to throw the picture up right here. That had a 12 inch mullet stuck in its mouth with its tail hanging out. And I still caught them on a shrimp. Do not put any preconceived ideas into these fish because they will surprise you. This past summer, we had a at least six to seven inch live croaker. The rod sat there just doing this, just doing that. And I mean a long time. And we were waiting for it to, for him to take it and move away. I told Aaron, the guy that was on the boat with me, I said, Aaron, just pull that in. He pulls in a trout that swallowed a big croaker that big live. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. Right here while we're, while we got him on. Right here while we're filming. Nice and easy. He's smoking it. He's smoking it, folks. We don't know what it is. He's coming right in. Okay, let me hit the net. Giant trout. Woo! It's a giant trout, folks. That's what we're looking for. That's what we do when you catch a big crook. When you catch croakers, what do you do? You sit here in the middle of the summer. And you catch them like that. Holy shit. Come back here, Aaron. Come back. This is this is the man of the hour right here. The man of the hour. Okay. That's that's all the proof. That's all the proof I ever need to show you folks. This is the bait from that. Look at his mouth. That's what makes the world go round, folks. That's what makes the world go round. Look at the size of that son of a bitch right there. You're not gonna catch 14, 15 inches, and you're not sitting here getting one bait stealer after another. It's gonna be the fish you want, and that's the only fish you're gonna catch. Look at this trout. We just caught this one right here, and here's what happened. Woo, woo, woo. Boop, 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 boop. And then we just went, oh, we lost him. But if you look down there, there's the fish. There's the croaker's tail in its mouth. You can't, I'm sure you can't see it. The hook is down its throat. There's the croaker. I can feel the croaker. What's this? 19 inches? I can hear the croaker. You can hear the croaker. You can hear the croaker. He's still alive. Look at this. Watch. Look. Watch, watch your stomach. Look right there. Watch. Can you see that? I am yanking the croaker backwards in his stomach. We didn't even have that trout hooked. He wasn't even hooked. There was no hook in his mouth. The hook was still in the croakers through his nostrils. The croaker was still alive. Do not have preconceived ideas about what these fish will do, folks. That is the thing that makes me go into doing things like throwing this giant plug, throwing a giant swim bait, 
throwing a giant top water. That's the reason. There was an old show, and I don't think it's on anymore, and it was Kurt Gowdy's son. Kurt Gowdy was a wild world of sports on ABC. Well, his son had a TV show called The One, Trevor Gowdy. And they would go fishing and all this, looking for the one. That's it. The one. Either catch them or not catch them. There is no gray. It's black or it's white. That's what this entire box and me showing you what I have and I'll be taking on my boat every time I go out. Either even with a customer, I might have something just like, you know, if I got customers and they're float rig fishing out behind the boat, I might throw one of these just while they're doing it, just at a spot. Or I'll go out R&D myself and I'll go to the jetties and I will pull and throw these mag darters or pull this down the rocks or take this giant nine inch walk the dog here and throw it across the end of the north and the south jetty the very tip I've already done it I've taken mirror lures and thrown them at the rocks and have caught yellowmouth trout commonly known as weak fish to seven and a half pounds at the jetties on a 52M mirror lure. I've taken mirror lures and throw them on the inside of the North Jetty in May and in probably 10 casts at a slack tide had my trout limit up to 20, you know, like 22 inches. There is no rules to saltwater fishing. If you're a saltwater guy, you know that. You can go as big as you want. You can do whatever you want. And that's the wonderful thing about it. So thanks for watching. This is my lure box, and this is what we get to look forward to coming up this spring and summer and fall. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Click that dang bell. So you can get notified via email. And when you click that bell, it'll open up and just say all. You want to be notified about everything. I don't really know what other there is, you're letting YouTube know that you're interested in seeing more videos and being notified when they're uploaded. So when something like this, I take these lures and I do something with them, you can learn from my experiences also.